As uh, I see it crumbling, I just shout, Go for the little one first! Reduce in numbers! Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Um, it, also really hurts. it is your turn, Bat. Or, Ferris, did you want to do anything else? You want to just stay where you are? Nope, that was action, bonus action, shouting. Yeah, I just don't know good. if you wanted to move. Oh, oh no, I think I'm far away enough from them right now. Yeah, you're you're good distance. Um, you're about thirty feet away from the, the, these creatures. Um, or yeah, thirty feet away from them. Uh, Buzz, it's your turn, and then Tover, you'll be next up on deck. Uh, yeah, let's see. All right, so I'm going to make an attack that's a 20, a natural 20 on the uh, the smaller one. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to expend a superiority die to use sweeping attack, Ooh. Uh, which I think that's the first time I've actually used one of my fighter abilities. It is. So tell us a little bit about how that works so people who maybe are this is the first time watching that know how it works. Uh when you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, you can expend one superiority die to attempt to damage another creature with the same attack. Choose another creature within five feet of the original target, and within reach, if the original attack roll would hit the second creature, it takes damage equal to the number you roll on on your superiority die. Uh, superiority die. And the Ooh. damage is the same type uh, as the original attack. Alright. Tell us how much you're dealing. And I wish there was a way to automatically make it crit. Yeah, I don't I don't know how to Yeah. I'm sure there is a way. So and then thirteen plus twelve? Uh plus this 2d6. Plus oh eleven. Jeez. Yeah, you just the did vicious 36 great six damage to this small bush. Let's Bloody hell. It. Yeah, so being an orc oh, with the vicious man. great axe is good. Yeah, no kidding. Let's it go. is. You, you, like slice the crap out of this bush. It is. It has like one, like dead bramble, bit left that it's like witching, and it's like it. It feels like it's like trying to be like I'll I'll get you for what you did, type of thing. <laughs> but it like it's just like. A stick out of it is like, like, ah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Motioning towards you, but you mess this thing up. Um, Tovert. Or, uh, Baz, did you want to do anything else? Uh, I need to roll my superiority die, and I can't remember what kind of die those are. Uh, are they a d8 or a d10? It would be your, I think it's the same as your hit die, right? Mm -hmm. Did not say that? Superiority die for... Uh, Battlemaster Fighter. The D8s. Okay. And so, yeah. That's the... less than your, your hip die. Just want to yeah. double check, because I was like, I don't think, it might not be the same. It's not plus my strength, is it? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't you think got so. it. Yeah. So one extra. Yep. Oh, man. If that would have rolled an eight. Only that would have rolled an eight. Well, it's it's one damage to the uh, the next one because it's it's like cleave. Oh, OK. That's victory. what you're doing right now. OK. Yeah. OK. Yeah, you do you do an extra damage to that that guy. That's actually useful because now that the big tree is injured, I can use Colossus Slayer. Oh on it. yeah, true. Very handy. Tover, you're next up on. All right, so the little one is still up. Yes. Yes, the little one is. It, it looks like it's barely holding on. Yeah. It looks uh... angry though. It's like ah, it's like moving and shaking like angrily at Baz. All right, I. I'm assuming I'm in range of my spell because we're all fairly bunched up. You are. This is 60. You're 80 feet away from the two trees. 
close enough. All right, I uh, turn into a, uh, an elf and I say, surprise! I look shocked while fighting. Why do you have advantage? Because I was uh, hidden. Oh, very nice. Okay. Uh, 23 oh. definitely hits. And you're trying to go for the big one, right? Or the little one? Oh, the little one yeah, to the little finish one. him off. For two and, damage. Yeah, it's not a lot, but if it's able to be set on fire, it is. Yeah, you're also doing fire Oh, yeah, you were it. able to set it on fire. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's something that has to do with fire. Oh, yeah. So, you actually do double damage. You hit for four damage. Nice. Wait, because how does your fire work? It's uh, it's not an ongoing thing. It's just like, it does fire oh. damage. It does fire damage, but like an additional descriptor of the spell is that it, if it's able to be set on fire, it is set on fire. So, I, I don't know how that works. Objects. Is it? Yeah. I'll look it up. Okay, it's still barely holding on, but now it's like shaking fiercely, trying to get itself off, like uh, get out, out like unfired. <laughs> unfired. <Flammable laughs> objects, and since it's alive, it's not an object, so unfortunate. Oh, okay, so it's not on fire. Nope. Okay, never mind. It is just not happy that you hit it with this uh, firebolt, but you still do the four damage. Um, because it is vulnerable to fire damage. But it's barely... Is a tree an object? Uh, yeah, it's probably not. I mean, this is... It's alive, so it's, it's alive, not yeah. And um, since I notice it's not dead, I take a couple steps backward to, you know, be a little worried. Okay. You step back a little bit, you said? Yeah, just do two squares. Okay, two steps. So, like, five feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um... Next up, it is going to be the, um, he is going to, ooh, this is awesome. She is going to teleport, and, uh, she teleports right behind you, Varys. Oh, I'm not surprised. And he is going to do one more thing. Are you wearing um, any armor? Studded leather armor. What? Studded leather armor. Studded leather armor, okay. So that's not going to affect you, but uh, she is going to shocking grasp you. Ugh. I am rolling roll all the night. That's or a crit. Honey, please. A lot of damage. Ow. Sorry, I crit for 31 damage. You might not be knocked out. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still up, but... Okay. You get to roll 8d8 at me. Why? That's half my health. And I'm level 9. It's so for half my health as well. It's because I crit. She's the big bad, so... I, I, I get that <laughs> feeling now, yeah. <laughs> Um, and oh. telepathically, she says to you, she starts cackling. So you just hear like laughing in your head as she puts her hand out and touches you. And this laughing just like goes through your head as like her hand touches you and you just feel like this shock of um, like electricity flowing through you and it hurts. And you're just like shaking like from electric electricity. Ugh. As she's laughing, like the whole time in your head, she's laughing while you're shaking. Kind of horrifying. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, it is going to be Uthal's turn. So Uthal, you just saw this, like it happened right behind you. It's hard to miss when your friend is like, like <laughs> getting electric, electric, electrified. Okay. So is she within 30 feet of me? Now? Oh yeah, she's within. Uh, 10, 15 feet of you. Okay. 
I'm going to use three sorcery points to cast. Well, I guess it's not really casting. It's like summoning using my bonus action. Uh, this. Oh, I remember a what this is. I made you a sheet for it. <laughs> yeah. So tell the audience what this is, because I think this is the first time you've ever used this on. And I've had that dog for you for a while. <laughs> Since level six. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, so I have the ability to summon a howling wolf of shadows, pretty much. Uh, it uh, targets like one person that I can see within 120 feet. Uh, it uses a di like a dire wolf, but it's uh, medium, not large. Um, it let's see, has half my sorcerer level for health points, uh, and it always knows where the target is. Um, <clears throat> since it can appear within 30 feet of that's unoccupied around the target. I am going to put it next to her. Uh, I roll for its initiative. Let me do right, that real fast. Initiative. I would and prefer to, just to be on your on your initiative, just so it's for ease. Okay, well, you can do that then. Yeah. If you want, it does say to roll. It's for up it, to you though. If, if I prefer not just to be on yours because it's easier, but if you want to, if you are like I want to roll, you go ahead. I'm not going to take it away from you, buddy. Uh, I'm gonna be difficult. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. Hold up, let me find it. I already had it open. <laughs> uh, character sheet. Initiative. Watch it be on mine. <laughs> All right, it's the same. It goes on your turn. Yep. <laughs> Page aligned. <laughs> so, another th another thing about him is he can only move towards the uh, the uh, target. It was summoned against, and um, the, the target, while he's in within five feet of it, has disadvantage on all my spells cast against him. Oh, nice. Yes. Cool. So anything it's trying to save against, it gets disadvantage? Yep. Cool. And if uh, it can move through other creatures and objects, but if it ends its turn there, it takes five force damage, which right now would kill it. Awesome. <clears throat> And then after doing that, I am going to cast the thing that I just picked up. I'm going to banish her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Please okay. do. Or try. Interesting combination. <laughs> yeah. I but I guess it's to give her disadvantage. That's why you did this. Yes. Okay. So talk to us about banish. I think this is the first time banishment has been used on this uh, show as well. Yes. So, I attempt to send one creature that you can see within range to another plane of existence. Uh, the target must succeed a charisma saving throw or be banished. Uh, I'm assuming she's native to this plane of existence. Am I right in assuming that? As far as you know, yeah. Okay. Uh, you banish them to a harmless demiplane. While there, the target's incapacitated. They remain there until the either I lose concentration or one minute is up. Um, and then they return with their the same health they left with. Uh, if the target is native to a different plane of existence, though, than the one that we're on right now, which is the material plane, I think, uh, the target is banished with a faint popping noise, returning to its home plane. If I keep the concentration up for one minute, they are left there in their home plane. Okay. Nice. Well, she's going to roll this. Yep. And my Unfor DC is 16. Unfortunately for you, uh, she has magic resistance, so she would normally get advantage. Um, so it actually kind of counteracts, and she just gets to roll. So um, a feeling. So, got yeah. a feeling. He is going to roll her charisma check. Oh, yes. She does no! not save. <laughs> she gets banished. So every round she gets to try to get out, right? No, she's incapacitated. For how much? Up to one minute. Up to one minute. Okay, so she's out of the fight for about a minute. Ooh, that's cool. Unless she's nice. from a different plane. Then after the one minute, she's still in the other plane. I mean, did we hear the faint popping sound? Yeah. Yeah, as you cast this, she slowly disappears. And, um... Varys, you're probably very happy about this. Um, 
She's not there anymore. But there is like a weird shadow dog standing next to you. Yep. And shadow dog will just stay there, which he also leaves in a minute. So, yeah, he'll be gone when she comes back. Shadow dog can stay up to five minutes. Is Is there there anything else you want to do? I think that's all your... Um, this was was Hound of Ill Omen hound... and a bonus. That's a bonus thing that you can yep, do? Yep, that's a bonus action. And then you cast a banishment, so the only thing you could do is move, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, it is you, five minutes. Sweet. If you wanted to move, you're about 30 feet away from Boz and the two trees. <clears throat> um, I'll head towards Boz, maybe 15 feet. Okay. That way I'm and it is now going to be the tree's turn. The trees. Oh, um, this one is going to. Uh, the tree on actually seeing you coming towards, uh, picks up a rock from the ground and is going to throw it at you as you're walking forward. Okay. And it fails. I'm guessing eleven does no. not hit. And. I get it's to spend a, a superiority die and make an attack of opportunity at because it attacked a target that isn't me. Yeah, go ahead. Nice. <laughs> it also crit failed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yes, it doesn't hit me. <laughs> Jesus. It's a natural 20 anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Damn, 32 damage. I gotta be careful what I'm doing. <laughs> but it doesn't know. It's just a three. Exactly. <laughs> All right. That's some nice damage. Um. Yeah. The tree tries to throw the rock, and um, as it tries to throw the rock, uh, it actually hits another tree. Um... The other tree doesn't move or anything like that, but like it does hit the other tree, and it looks a little disorientated when it does that. And as it's as it's kind of like, what happened? You just come in and you like slice at it with your axe, and you're just like cutting away at this. And it's a thick, huge tree, so it's it's like you take a big chunk into it, but like you're not able to cut it in half or anything like that. But it's you took a big wedge out of it. It looks like it, you know it's about to be like timber at some point. <laughs> Um, and the little tree, I think, is next. The little bush tree, little bramble bush, is going to try to attack you again. He has one little attack. The 17 hit. 17 hits. 18 bludgeoning. Ow! I'm doing real good on these rolls. Yeah. Like, a 6 and a 5, like, what? This is like a really crappy little tree. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it's doing so much damage. Um, the next thing is that it, the ghoul thing that, or like the undead creature that's kind of like running towards you guys, is now made it up to you. Um, Baz, you are surrounded. Not so hot for you. Um, it comes in and it's going to try to bite you. I'd like it if it didn't. Twenty oh. hits. It does. <sighs> didn't okay. Four and nine. It it goes in and it just like <sighs> and it's making like this horrible like <sighs> like like weird noise and it its limbs are just like kind of waggling about. It looks really gross. One of the maggots like slowly tries to crawl into the wound that it's making into your arm. That sounds bad. Good clown. Yeah. Next character, cool. And it is going to be Varus's turn. Alright, I first of all, I look at the shadow dog, I look at Uthal, and I just go, Will she be gone forever? And then I see the tree throwing a rock into another tree, and I just Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just quietly. Then I look at Baz, who is obviously in trouble. How hurt is he looking? How hurt are you looking, Baz? Like, what, what's it look like right now for Baz? <laughs> if you want to put it on, like, a numerical... <laughs> he looks 
like he's getting fairly overwhelmed by all the things attacking him, but he's still standing fairly strong. All right. Yeah. A bit all right. bloodied, but got... he's got his fight in him still. I turn back around and say, Uthal, finish the tiny one. And I take out my bow and I will fire an arrow at the... Uh... Oh, actually. Yeah, I can use extra attacks. I will attack the... Uh... The big awaken tree twice. So that's uh, two crits. <laughs> yeah, give them to As me. You do. It's gonna be a normal roll. There we go. That's eleven damage. Eleven. And because I have colossus slayer and it's already injured, I get to roll one d eight per turn once. And because of hunter's mark, I get to add another one d six. That's another five damage. I will use my bonus action to cast Hail of Thorns, which is a DC 14 deck save, or do 1d10 damage. Good up. Did you roll your crit? Oh, yeah, you did. Twenty-two damage. And you get to roll a DC 14 deck big... save to half that damage. This was on the big one. That's on the big one, yeah. And that's my first attack. All right. So for my second attack, which is also a crit. That's another 10 damage with Hunter's Mark again. It's another 13. I'm rolling crappy, Jesus. Yeah, but it's still good. Yeah, it's still oh. good. So what you see is just Varus pouring out like two arrows in quick succession. And then suddenly from his bow, as if he fired a barrage of arrows, comes just a hail of thorns that's flying into the tree and smashing into it. Yeah, that looks amazing. There's like arrows sticking out of the tree. Um, you did 35 damage. Yeah, it's intense. Um, the tree's not happy about it. It's like trying to tug at like the arrows that you're, you've shoved into it. And um, are you content with where you're standing? I'm going to move away from where the devil woman just was. <laughs> okay. Where would you like to move? I'm going to move 35 feet, like, Up by away Uthal. from Boz and Uthal. Oh. So I'm going to be, like, out on the edge. Out on the edge, of okay. combat, basically. All right. I'll put you over there. Um, And it is going to be Boz's turn, and then Tober, you'll be up next. All right, well, I think I'm just going to hit this tree a whole bunch of times with my axe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that seems to be working. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, it turns out that I've been doing savage attacks wrong. For some reason, I had it down there as doing 1d6 extra damage. It does an additional um, damage die from my weapon. Oh. So that's another d12. Okay, going oh. forward, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. That is horrifying. I mean, that weapon is pretty horrifying. It I, is. I think it's funny how long you've had it, and then you guys, like, you guys have had some of the weapons that you've had for, like, so long and never never looked at them. I'm like, I gave you a magic item. <laughs> yeah, Uthal had from episode one. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't decide to look at it until last episode, right? <laughs> yep. We're on episode, like, know, 12 episode or 13 episode now. Four. Yeah, like, that's... what? <laughs> 25 don't even talk tech priest Roxy has a staff that she hasn't even looked at so you're I think you got in episode 1 as well oh episode 2 or whenever you first came in oh we just got a raid thank you Scraticus for the raid welcome Bob is suspicious oh no what did Bob do alright raiders let's get your we'll mad pew pews out Get the laser guns! Fight off the raiders! Battle must con commence. We're gonna have like a cool raid thing. Uh, Ballas is working on it. Um, all right. That's a. And... This is your damage. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. And so... then I have a second attack for being a fighter. Uh, all right. Yeah, don't be worried. But just... forty-two damage. Oh, gosh. 
and uh... I think you might kill it. Good. I agree. <laughs> I have ideas. This is the big one, right? Hmm. Uh, why is it? Oh, because you crit, so it rolls twice. Yeah. And then the last thing is the third thing is your vicious strike. Your vicious strike. Savage attacks, rather. Oh, it's adding your strength, though. Oh. Hmm. So. You you can add vicious. Or you can add it as a separate thing and label it and instead of saying slashing add it as your whatever it's called and then have it not have the bonus you know you see how to do that right yeah or, i think so do you need me to do it on your sheet for you uh i think i i know what you mean you figured it out okay. yeah so we can do it afterwards if plus but 10 is not actually a 10 it's a Five to five. It's the four. It's thirty-one. Still insane. Uh, use a lot of damage. Um, and even if I subtract, so this wouldn't have been an eleven. It would be a six. Even if I subtract a six, I think you. Yeah, you overkilled this bad boy. So tell us how you kill this huge, like, it's like, it's not sequoia size, but it's like a giant tree that you're fighting right now. Uh, you know, since this is like not natural, the amount of damage that he's doing right now, I think that he's like, as he's just hacking away at this thing, he's kind of getting a, like, almost a, silverish glow around him. You did 69 damage, lol. <laughs> nice. Lol. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so as he's hacking away at it, he's just like kind of got this faint silver glow about him. And he's just viciously just strike after strike, just cutting through it. And it's, it's like a flurry of movement. Yeah, you're slicing at it and the, the bark of the tree that's like pretty much dead on it. It's like gray and white. It's like flying off and bits of the tree is just like everywhere. And the little tree that's like standing next to it is like freaking out and the, or the little bush that's like the bramble bush is like freaking out. It's one little limb that's still barely holding on. I don't know how. And the ghoul is watching this happen and the ghoul is actually looking like it's gonna back up. Um... <laughs> And, I mean, unless you want to move. Uh, a, I'm going to use my action surge now to okay. turn my <laughs> action that cool. You're not getting out of here. Yeah. Nice. Injure him. I mean, it can't move anyways until it's, it's turned. Yeah. But you, you see it kind of like horrified for a ghoul. Yeah, his, Boz's face just to the ghoul as he's starting to back away. Not enough death yet. <laughs> Aww. I'm glad the natural 20s are still around. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. That's actually a nat 20. So. 13. Uh, ignore the second savage attack. Okay. What's the 14? Yeah. And this d6. Dang. Keep rolling four on those. This is so much damage. 34. <laughs> This is what happens when you get higher level. This is why and, I like threw a tree at him that did a lot of damage. And an enormous amount. It probably of would have wrecked Tover. I think Tover's like the, the babber of all of them. <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't want to be part I'm of this. Strong, don't worry. I mean, I'm um, only Tover has people to do the dirty work for him. Tell me <laughs> how you just you yeah demolish this ghoul. The ghoul had 22 HP. You just did 34 HP. 34 damage so <laughs> he sees it hesitate and start to back up and then just almost like you don't you barely see any movement before it happens and the axe just comes down diagonally and he just flies in half nice i like it yeah, he slices in half and for a moment you see him like reach out with his weird gross hands that look like they've been 
rotten in a way and like parts of it have bone coming through and he like claws at the ground and parts of his skin fall like fall, clump off and he just like stops moving pretty gross Ugh. and all like the insides is just like this gross old yeah it's it's not a pretty sight um the ghoul's dead the giant tree is dead and now there's just one little bush <laughs> bramble bush with one claw hand like shaking back and forth and now you're not sure if it's shaking because it was angry or if it's scared um and I've got that this. takes us to Tover. Let's behold my most powerful spell. Level two magic missile. <laughs> Take this. <laughs> Tover, for those of you who are new, because Scrat, uh, I know Scrat, you just hosted us. Um, for all of the people who are new that just joined us, um, we are raising money for St. Jude. Um, to the right of us, you can see uh, all the things that you, you can do to donate. Um, we're coming close to the end of this camp, this episode, but... Um, that's the stuff that you can do, and over here is how much we've already made, which is $9,260 for the kids at St. Jude, and our goal is 25 k so it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, you, you cast this magic missile. What does it look like when you... I, I cast three darts, and I, actually four, so okay. this, but I'm assuming this kills it. Never mind, I see him now. Um, let's see. Do we have to roll the other two? I, I'll, I'll roll them up. I'm, uh, That's more like it. Yeah, you're yeah, building you, up you, to it. you kill it. What does it look okay. like? As, what does it look like as you're sh shooting out these magic missiles? Topher is a snake right now. He he was laying no, flat on the no, ground. He turned and... back to an elf. Oh, yeah. you turned back into an elf. Okay. I, I, I can't Last cast round. magic while I'm a snake. So at the at the start of my first turn, I turn into a person. Did the firebolts, which is a sneak right. attack. Right. I forgot that and you now, turned back. Um, now, magic missile swarm. Pew, pew, pew. Okay. Yeah, you just you just like start slinging your hands and like these these missiles come flying out and um Uthal to the left and right of you are these missiles that you're just like they're like barely coming close to you and they make it directly to this to this um bless you uh <laughs> to this uh, little <laughs> bramble tree and it just they mutilate it it's actually like a like a branch and then each one of the branches slowly come off and it's just like one stick and then you break the stick in half and the bramble all falls to the ground and it kind of withers yeah and don't mess with a master mage you are now at your one minute mark where um how does the banishment work again? We, we have, have a couple of rounds. One turn before I cast it that. Yeah, I'm just looking at that. Okay. I'm just looking at how it works. Oh yeah. Not that she's coming back, but you guys are out of combat, so you can you yep. can communicate I, and move about however you wish now. Uthal is gonna walk up to to Baz and heal him with cure light wounds. Level two. I'm going to walk over to the tree, and while I'm pulling my arrows out, I just go, This tree seems to be all bark and no bites. Shame. Didn't work. Uthal yeah. states to the party, she will be back. It's right here. <laughs> it doesn't click. I, I ready my bow, and i uh, like, Boss, are you okay? Uh, Buzz nods. He's just, like, kind of breathing heavily, still coming down from that little bit of rampage. You just did. Oh yeah, you just went a little crazy. Yeah, I have to do this by hand because the button doesn't you're just like, work. <sighs> like breathing heavily, you have your axe out, and you're just like looking around. Then you slowly calm him down. Uh, Never surround an orc. I was thinking about teleporting you, but. That works. <laughs> there we go. It's 11 HP. <laughs> I was 14. Buzz. Uh, can yeah, I cure buzz myself real quick? Thank you. Yeah, you can heal yourself. Uh, this is downtime, so you can do... This all's gonna be ready with his great sword for when... If, if she reappears, he thinks she is going to, but... 
We'll just stand in a circle with our weapons raised as soon as she comes back. Just I take another. How long do, is she gone for? Uh, a, should be a full minute since I casted it. All right, we have a little if bit of I time can then. Speak that in enough time. One more cure loop. Yeah, I mean you survive. can be saying that while you guys are healing because you guys are all healing. Okay. Now. Yeah, that's nine HP, and then I oh. assume you're decent enough HP wise, right? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Right. Oh, I don't have that. Never mind. Right, so I also get into a combat position. I forgot I had that. I could use it against. It would have been hilarious. <clears throat> so we're all ready then? If you are, I can end it early. So. Yes, we are. I make. I get a little bit. Actually, I stay with them. Instead of going further away, because she teleports anyway. Yes. Yeah. All right. You end your spell. Yep. I like the idea of you choosing when to end it, because yeah, you guys are pretty much in control of this fight. I'm gonna end my spell, and then. Yeah, you end your spell, and she comes back. Uh, you all, except for Uthal, will get a chance to go before she gets to go. So, um. I had ready to attack, to, but I don't know if canceling my concentration counted as an action. Um, that's true. I would say your, it would, because you canceled your timing, the spell. Your, your timing would be the best. You know exactly when she's coming in, so you can just stand there, stop concentrating, hit. You know where she's going to appear. So you Fine, can how about this? I'll let you all like... have one attack on her before she gets to act. Who thought you can start us off? Even though you're normally at the end, I'll let you be at the front. I was just curious. I'll be kind. No, please, let him go first. I'm, I'm Technically, I'd be ending the concentration on my turn. So, Or before it. I don't know. Weird things. I don't know. Sorry. Kindness. Is... <laughs> Goes a long way. Go ahead. Yep. I attack with my greatsword. I hope it hits. It hits. Nice. <laughs> good, hey. good. And I'm not discharging. Yeah, you any hit. Charges. I mean, a 26, that's a lot. I'm, you're hitting. I'm not hitting using some. any of the charges. So, it's just the 16. Um, okay. Ju it's just the 16. <laughs> I only did 16 damage. And then my hound also gets to attack this turn. Mm-hmm, because it's on your turn. And then, so... Where is his attack? Ah, oh, there it is. That should have been with advantage. Should I just roll it again? Because he's got yeah. pack tactics. Yeah, you can roll again. None of those... Uh... No. That doesn't hit. Neither Neither of those hit. Okay. Okay. By the way, visually, the scene would be kind of hilarious. She just kind of pops back into place and then just weapons just start... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, fan yeah. art of this would be insane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, God. That's my turn. I'm going to say I use the bonus action to cancel the spell. All right. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be Varys' turn. Okay, so when she pops back in, I cast my bonus action to place Hunter's Mark on her. Mm -hmm. And I will pull out my fancy arrows of plus three and take a shot. That's the, uh, at the lady. Go for it. So that's going to be another crit. Yep. That's 16 damage. And then Colossus Slayer comes into effect because Uthal just injured her, so that's another d8. Mm -hmm. And Hunter's Mark for another d6. It's another 10 damage. 26 damage. And then I get my second attack, which is mm -hmm. also a crit. That's 18 damage. How many With... d20s are you at now? Uh, 28. I'm going through them rather quickly. Yeah. That's uh, Plus two. 20 damage for the second attack. Altogether, 46 damage. Woo! Yeah, I used the fancy arrows for once. Oh yeah, these are the plus three arrows, right? That you got? Yeah. He got a box with some fancy arrows in it. 
I'm going to say it wasn't her There's some anymore. Irony in all of this that's really funny. Um and cool. I'm guessing you don't need to move or anything like that because you're just like holding your bow on her. No. Um, and as I as I like prepare to fire my arrows, I just look her in the eye and say, Adventure awaits. She actually smiles, like and she just stares at you the entire time as you're hitting her and like arrows are hitting her, but she's just she's just smiling at you. It's a little That's creepy. creepy. Yeah. She looks confident, like she doesn't care that you're hitting her, and she's just grinning at you. Baz, it's your turn. Alright, well, uh, vicious great axe upside the head. <laughs> Paladin, this is going so well. <laughs> and it's think? more natural 20s, so. Okay. Uh, And I also is have last my one? Attack. Oh, so you have the savage, savage attack up here. And yeah. then plus six. Cool. 30. Ferris, Ferris has suspicious now. Yeah. Suspicious Bob. They brought the suspicious Bob with them. <sighs> this is insane. How much damage you guys do? 60 damage you did, Elf. Let's kill the big bad. <laughs> Jeez. All right. And last but not least, Tover. All right. Let's finish her off with good old fashioned level one magic missile. Two. Is that two? Yeah. Three. I really need to fix that thing. Two actually work correctly. Well, damage? Oh, it's a love now. Fine. It works. Yeah. All right. Sure. Added a lot. Yeah. It's weird. You all just did a ton of damage to her. 134 damage combined together, <laughs> just so you're aware. She's still standing there smiling. And even though there's parts of her that look like... Um, her skin is torn, or her cloth is uh, wrecked, or her armor is wrecked. Um, she just stands there smiling, and she's, in particularly, she's looking straight at Varys. And he's like, All the ladies love Varys. Tick tock. Playtime's over. And she casts Time Stop. Um. You briefly stop the flow of time for everyone but yourself. No time passes for other creatures uh, while you take 1d4 plus 1 turns in a row, during which you can use actions and move as normal. The spell ends if one of the actions you use during this period or any effect that you create during the period affects a creature other than you or an object being worn or carried by someone other than you. In addition, the spell ends if you move to a place more than 1,000 feet from the location where you cast it. So, I'm gonna roll that. Yep. Or, I'm on a good roll, I'm doing good today. Ugh. So, for four turns in a row, um, I'm a stopped. So in as she says this to you, Varys, you have a look on your face and everyone just pauses in their motions. Time goes on. No, you're staying still. Um, or no time passes for you. But as soon as you all are able to move again and look around, she's not there. Is she within 120 feet? No? Well, I mean, you can look around. Uh, my, and all hound, of our my hound would know. Oh, she's not within 120 feet. Let me just make sure it was 120. Oh, yeah. I forgot that you could tell that. You can tell that immediately you can tell that she's not within 120 feet of you. Okay. But I don't think you yeah. can tell beyond that where she is, right? It's only within uh, the 120. For the, for the thing, it says at the start of its turn, it automatically knows it doesn't have a range on it. Which seems weird to me. 
The only thing that has the range was the 120 feet that I could see when I summoned it. Hmm. Can you pop it into chat again? Yep. Just so I can see it. I just want to make sure we're following the rules. I would think that you wouldn't be able to once it's out of range, but... Yeah, I think it's you the might, last... Your dog might still thing. know the direction, perhaps, that she that she's in. Yeah, it's the last thing in the tick marks. Right before the hound appears. I understand the hound automatically knows. But it's okay. It in. But it would, just, it would appear in an unoccupied space of your choice within 30 uh, feet of the target. It's, it's, all, it's just the stuff before that, which is the foresight thing that I called it. I'm going to say, like, it would have to be within your, like, within your casting range, 120 feet. Because that seems odd otherwise, if they're, like, super, super far away from you. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean... It would have to take the most direct route I and the most direct route. I think route it could run up to the anything. edge. So it can run up to the edge of the 120 feet and it knows that she's in that direction. But that's as far as it, it will know. Does that make okay. sense? Yep. So immediately your dog Thanks. will know that she's that direction. And if you tell it to continue to go, it will go all the way to the edge. And it looks like it's going towards where she was at whenever you guys initially engaged in combat with her. It looks like it's further into the forest. If you let it go all the way 120 feet. It, okay. it goes all the way the 120 feet forward. I mean, if it also stops inside any objects, like on its movement, it technically dies. Oh. No, there's, I mean, unless you consider like Bramble an object. It, it has to move directly towards it. Hmm. So, and it moves 50 feet each time. Yeah, there's a lot of Bramble, so if you would consider that in its way. Um. But I, I'd say it goes the whole 120 feet forward. So you know where you know where she's at. You know the direction that she's in. You just don't know the okay. exact location she's at. Okay. What happened? If you don't want to book it 120 feet, you know that like that's the last place that she could have been. So what do you indicate like that's the direction she we, she's now? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Teleport. Uh, Uthal does know there's tell. Well, actually, Uthal himself has a teleport that moves up to 300 feet, but his is different in that it'll cause damage to those around him when he does it. So, it is not a teleport that I know. Yeah, I mean, that's he clever, have... telling them about the spells that you know. I'm a dumbass. She might have teleported, but... I, I, I forgot I, that I don't the next think person it was just... wound has to roll a save or be muted, and that's her. Oh, yeah. What was Whoops. your thing? Uh, well, one of those wild magic surges says that the next person I wound, and that's her, has to roll a save or be muted. Actually, no. you wounded that tree. Yeah, you wounded the tree. That, the oh, tree's yeah, not a person, true. though. It's... I would say that a humanoid is a person, and the tree does not. Oh, we, we forgot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I would like to... So, you say that she might have teleported but I don't think it was purely teleporting she spoke to me again she said tick tock playtime's over that's weird yeah well, she said she's in that direction further into the forest yes my hound went that way up to where he could go Fortunately, he's he's gone now. He does not last long. All right, I will um, cast locate animals or plants because Varys has a suspicion. Uh, so describe or name a specific kind of beast or plant, concentrating on the voice of nature in your surroundings. You learn the direction and distance to the closest creature or plant of that kind within five miles, if any mm. are present. And I would like to look for the adult red dragon. Ooh, within five miles. Do you know the exact location? It's just direction and You distance. learn the direction and distance to the closest creature or plants of that kind. Okay, so five miles. 
you're probably about because you guys traveled three or four hours that's where you were how you got how far you went in the forest so that's probably like three miles in You do sense a red dragon, or not a red dragon. Did you say red dragon? Is that what you said? Okay. You do sense there is a red dragon within 4,132 feet away from you. <laughs> okay. Which direction is that? Towards the town. That is closer than a mile. Towards the town. Ooh. So you see me, like, chant for a bit, and then just go pale. Are you alright? I look straight in the direction of where the dragon is, like... I had a suspicion. It's been proven wrong, but... That's the opposite 4, way. 4,132 right? feet It's the in... opposite way that the, um... The mm -hmm. mage went. Now, yeah. so I point like exactly where the dragon is, like 4,132 feet in that direction, which is not far enough to get back to the town. There's a red dragon over there. Oh, well, that's good to know. Let's not go there. Say what? Looks like we're following this woman thing. The same dragon? I don't know. It just points me to the closest. At least the spell does. Let's I've assume there's only one. Dragons don't hang out in like large groups. So if no. the dragon, I had there, a suspicion that... that way. I'm not sure if venturing deeper into the forest at this point in time is a great idea. It's better than going up against a dragon. Well, she so didn't death. seem to even notice what we had done to her. No. I mean, she did run away, so there's that. We have seen this dragon, or we've seen a dragon recently. Varys and I. It... It seems to swoop in at times where we're in danger. It took... Uh, a large two-legged lizard. I don't know what it is. And there were... For those back home, it was a T-Rex. Wearing a flash It was suit. a T-Rex, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it... It destroyed a herd of war beasts as they were heading towards Flipville. This could be an ally. A red dragon? Don't be silly. It's more of like a temporary convenience thing, if anything. No, I can sense it. There's something between me and that dragon. And oh, I think now is the time we go and die. find it. It really? doesn't even show up in your hand. Interesting. Come on, Tover. I'm sure that a dragon would be impressed by elven nobility. Our finest species. No I less. I mean, that, that does make sense. However, <laughs> uh, it may be upset learning that I have blue dragon heritage. You know, blues and reds don't get along. Because oh. blues are obviously more attractive. Beautiful. And, you know, the reds... This is the first time you all are hearing that Tover has... Dragon heritage, although Varys, you did see this. Um, I did see you... a lot of his bits. Yeah, yeah you saw did. a lot of his bits. I was um, totally naked. And, and you were specifically really looking at him a lot, Varys, because you recognized him somehow and because of his sister. Also, I'm very handsome. Not right now. You're very crackly. Not right now, no. Would I know, because my favorite enemy is dragons, so would I know the dynamic relationship between blue and red dragons? Um, I will give you advantage on... It's a natural 20 anyway. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, yeah, blue dragons, um, they're kind of chaotic. Um, 
they tend to be very meticulous about whether when they're going to attack something or um, uh, what do you call it? Um, whenever they're whenever they're going to try to get more for their horde or whatever. So they they tend to usually kind of like hang out for themselves. They they aren't kind of like looking for other people to hang out with. Um, and they normally are. Like I said, they they will meticulously plan things. Whereas red dragons are prob like the second most powerful dragon that you know of. Um, they tend to um, breathe fire. Is very it hurts a lot. Yeah. And blue dragons are like electricity, so you'd know that they would they breathe like electric electric fire I guess okay but there. there's nothing that would like suggest that a blue dragon and a red dragon heritage person couldn't like meet and get along for a little bit oh they would not get along dragons in general don't tend to like hang out with other dragons mm -hmm. they usually will fight each other especially like because these are both not good dragons they're they're both of the evil kind they tend to mm. be more chaotic than the others where there, there are some dragons that are kind and maybe will help humans and stuff like that. So for you, since this red dragon has been kind of helping you, as Baz mentioned, that is an odd thing. Yes, that doesn't I think this it. red dragon is a bit of an oddity among its kind. Therefore, I think we could risk seeking it out without too much danger. Well, I'm not staying here alone, so <laughs> might as well. All right. I guess we seek an audience you know, with the dragon. I just thought of something. What if that dragon is one of those random magic whatchamahoosits? What if it's actually a person that, you know, ate Then the I would like to berry. converse with that person and find out why I feel this connection with it. No, I'm putting all my hopes on it being just a regular old human who got accidentally turned into a dragon. All That's right, we'll go find the inventor with the dragon suit then. <laughs> And I just start marching. That works too. I, Uthal will follow. Uh, he is going to use his font of magic, though, to um, change one spell, his one level, one of his one level one spell slots into one sorcery point. Yes. Right. Could we perhaps have like a tiny bit of rest? That is not a bad idea. Okay. Agreed. Right. And the party heads back into the town of Blipdville, where they think a dragon might be. Well, Varys knows that there is a red dragon about in that direction. Um, and that is where we're going to end today's episode. So, <laughs> thank you all. I hope you had fun. And Hooray, I'm sorry the big yet. bad got away. I was excited because I'm like, if she got in danger, I knew what she was going to do. She has a lot of things up her sleeve. But she's not meant to be killed Level yet. nine spells! Jesus! Yeah, I don't have counter spell. <laughs> I'm not that surprised anymore that I nearly died from shocking grass once. Yeah, I know someone in chat was like, Time stop? What? <laughs> it's not something I have ever seen in a campaign, and I think it's so cool. Yeah, me neither. It's because it's a level nine spell! Yeah, no, it's cool. No one's able to cast level 9 spells. That's insanely powerful. She's Actually, a, she's a fun 12. character. I think she's going to be... She's a little mad. <laughs> you haven't figured that one out. I, th I think I got that by now, yeah. Why did you all <laughs> stab me for a while? That's fun. Um... I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And of course, thank you to all of our donators today. I'm just going to yes. do a quick shout out to everybody. We are at $9,260,000 for the kids at St. Jude, which is just amazing. We are almost halfway towards our goal of 25K, which is just like insane. So, so thank you all so much for that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to quickly do a big, big thank you all to the peeps. So, um, 
Of course, I want to first thank uh, Chevrus, who I didn't get to say thank you to before because they donated dur like, during an off time. Like, we weren't even live with the stream. They donated $60.50 to even it out to make 9000 so thank you so much for that. Um, and then, of course, today's, uh, which was Craxis re uh, Revenge, uh, Tasteful Magic, Totally Not Frank, Aurora Marie, twice, so thank you so much more, Aurora. And then Old Mr. Frodo, three times, so thank you so much to everybody for all of your donations every little bit matters even a dollar makes a big difference so thank you for all all the little mag loves in chat appreciate it and of course um we'll go around and let everybody say like their favorite thing from today as well as um tell people where you can find where they can find you at we'll kick things off first with stan hey everyone i'm stand alone and this was pretty fun i Finally got to get rid of a few of those 20s there. <laughs> How many are you left at? Only a few? Only 65. <laughs> Only 65. So geez. many. <laughs> you guys are totally going to be successful with this dragon. That's horrifying to me. Diplomacy roll. It's oh, great. It's yeah, that's why I wanted also, to like, find who's a like, dragon Let's right go now. find like, a dragon. It's going to be great. And I forget that you all have D20s. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't. But having people in your group that do, who can... Yeah, I've got a pretty big plus to everything. This too. is why I specifically made sure Baz went along. It's like, hey, we've been having a stroke of good fortune. Let's poke a dragon. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, you can find me at S underscore Delone on Twitter. And you can see me chatting in the Space Vikings Discord every once in a while. Um, I'd like to give a shout out. Uh, as I usually do. Um, got some new people here today, I think, so it's be good to let them know. Um, there's a Twitter account you should follow uh, called Blind Temple. Um, he is a um, blind man who plays D&D and other role-playing games and stuff, and he he does a lot of blind advocacy stuff on his page. He'll give links for you know, various resources to help you get into gaming as a uh, as a blind person and uh, he'll he'll even help you find a game if you go talk to him this is really good guy so uh, I think you guys should all go give him a follow yeah and yeah that's me and him thank you as always Dan really appreciate right. it I love Baz so much <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad um, of course moving on to Derp Digital tell us what your favorite moment of tonight was and of course where people can find you at I, I really like the fight with the uh, with the hag. I'm I'm curious to get more into that and like the red dragon on the side as well, because that's yeah, been one of really Baris's main goals here. Because uh, people who actually know what a hag is in D and D might be like, that's not a hag, because she's she's not a hag. But we know her as the hag of the forest. You, you know, well, so you th what... you think that this might be the hag of the forest. I have suspicions, but yeah, it's it's been fun. It's been fun. Next time we'll go tickle a dragon. <laughs> anyway, you can find me whenever I'm not moderating on youtube.com slash derpdigital. Currently it's a bit of a slump because, well, life's really busy right now. Also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash derpdigital, I'll probably get to back to streaming at some point. But like I said, I need to figure me out before I can figure that out. So Always take care of yourself. That's the most important thing. I think mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard as a, as like a content creator, you always want to just like make things and you're like, you feel pressure to make things. But sometimes you just have to be like, I need to rest. Yeah. <laughs> I should take yeah, my own advice. Those, those pills are currently not, they're helping, but they're also not helping, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Got to find the right balance. And of course, moving on to SNAZ2150. What was your favorite moment of tonight? And of course, where can people find you at? I got to use my hound. Woo! You did finally get to use your hound. You've had it for a long time. <laughs> so long. Um, that's probably my favorite part, using the hound to banish <laughs> this crazy person who's apparently not the hag, probably. Yeah, I think it She's was definitely cool. a like, That was a cool move, because banish is like a pretty intense yeah. spell. That, that was a good it call. Easier. That was now I just wish yeah. I had counter spell too. Yeah. Good luck counterspelling a level nine time stop. That's the thing that I was like, oh, I should use counter. Like whenever I was like, oh, I forgot I have that thing earlier. 
Uh, I have oh. counterspell, so it would have been funny if I counterspelled and banished you. Oh, we would have had a duel of the fates and like. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Yeah, because if oh. I had counterspell, then I could cast counterspell on the counterspell. <laughs> I think you can only do it once as a reaction, though, right? Yeah. So I don't think you can use oh, you yours. Can. Magic missiles fly out of nowhere. Can you take reactions during your turn and then just not have them for the next round? <laughs> now I'm curious. No. I'll look into it. Your re I, I think your reaction has to trigger on something, so you can't just use it of your free volition. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You definitely can't use it as a free as a free thing. But like, if someone counterspells and hits you with a spell, and then you counter, I, I'm gonna look it up because I'm curious. That's an interesting thing. It the only the only thing like you can't use it like proactively, but like yeah, that's the thing. It's a reaction. You can only use it when something. It reminds happens, so. me of the you know like the anime thing where there's like one person casting something and the other person's casting. And it's like. Ooh, ooh. It's like going back and forth to see who it's going like, to cast on. That's what makes me yeah, feel like. Yeah, yeah. Great. So, and Epic you, battle of nothing. <laughs> you can find me on the Discord as snaz20, well, as Nate, parentheses, snaz2150. <laughs> and everywhere else as snaz2150. Good job. I'm so proud of you. He had like three different things. <laughs> um, yes. And of course, last but not least, the wonderful Paladin Hawk. Um, are are you are you level four now? I, I, He's gonna I, be level I, five yeah, now. Yeah, level four. If, Hell if we level yeah. up, it's level five. Yeah. That's where the power comes. You guys in. are definitely getting a full level uh, for this. This was that was awesome. That was a good milestone. Um, and also, you get to find like. Um, a pretty big bad in all of this, so I think I'm excited. It seems like you don't know exactly who she is yet, but it'll be cool. Um, tell people where they can find you at, and of course, what your favorite moment from tonight was. Well, my favorite moment was that I got to do an emotional scene. That was unexpected. Yeah, that was good. Were you yeah. crying? It looked like you were crying. I was like, I hope everyone's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can do that. I'm like super skilled. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love emotional scenes. They're fun. Yeah, me too. I love that. Like, but I, I, I never expected like Tover to be able to do something like that because he basically only cares about himself. But it happened anyway. So, I mean, that's that why I was asking you cool. all those very yeah. interesting questions about your family, and I got really into like asking you about your sister and what you did. I think like those things are what makes later moments like what happened with um, that Derp's that's character. That was great. Like, and I'm, I'm so happy that we delayed it until now because that was an it's a wonderful scene. Yeah. Thank yeah. You, Rick. It worked out well. It worked out well. And Varys, oh, like the way you went, or wait, the way Varys went about it, I was like, that's a little <laughs> insensitive. <laughs> he, he's not a people person. He lives in the woods. You know, he, he's got a minus one to charisma as well. Oh, totally. I get it. I was like, this is totally the way Varys would tell you. I think your sister's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought's the people person? Yep. Uh, no. Not when nobility's around. Yes. He is now. He is now. Because I needed to be able to fight. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, like the idea the that you call. have learned kind of to be around him type of thing. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm Alan Hulk. I'm a Twitch moderator for Roll For It, Geek Space TV, and Random Tuesday. You can find me in all of those chats, hopefully. And across so many discords, you lose track. <laughs> but I'm here to fight trolls, whether in D&D or in the chat. And of course, thank you guys all. You're you're amazing. And uh, next week we will be starting with a whole new crew of people. We'll see who's all interested and has time to join us. But it is going to be exciting. And of course, maybe we'll see a dragon adventure going off to to uh, chat with a dragon. We'll see. Um, One day. Before we head out, I'm going to let these guys go, and I'm going to just kind of chat with you all uh, while we raid somebody. So um, thank you for, for tuning into our Space Viking Chronicles for kids and for all of the donations. We really appreciate it. So do we. All right.